All right, Tony Pellegrino here with Genrite Off-Road, and we're continuing on our terminology series, and today we're talking about suspension. I'm going to describe the different types of suspension that there is. You need to figure out what you have on your Jeep, but it will help you when you're talking to people understand the differences between the types of suspension and what the advantages and disadvantages are. All right, let's start with leaf springs. So originally CJs, YJs were all leaf spring, and this happens to be what they call spring under. So the spring goes underneath the axle tube in both front and rear. Um, leaf springs are very reliable. Um, they, they provide a decent ride, or they can provide a decent ride. They don't get quite as much flex, but um, depending on the brand of leaf spring you have, um, you can get some pretty good articulation out of them. And uh, these are relatively inexpensive. A lift kit um, is usually about $200 a spring, so you can uh, do it relatively inexpensive. All right, the next style, more like on a TJ, JK, JL, is going to be a coil spring, right? So they change from leaf springs to coil springs. Um, this provided a much better ride and better articulation. Um, the, this also handled a lot better because of the link style suspension that these came with. And then behind this is a shock that then helps to dampen, just like we have here, a shock behind the leaf spring. Um, this, this actually works a little bit better and again, provides a, a smoother ride. To lift this vehicle, you can get a longer spring and uh, different control arms. There's a lot of different kits available, but a coil spring is pretty much the standard on a Jeep today. Then, whether you have this style or this style, what everybody wants is a coil over. So a coil over is just what it sounds like. The coil is over the shock. Now the nice part about these is they're typically a very high quality shock. If you're talking about a King or a Fox, these are um, all American made, very, very high quality, um, which means the performance level is also very high. And the dampening control is much better and the spring control is directly over it. So nothing's fighting each other. It's all directly in line. And uh, this suspension, not only does it ride very nice because it's got a dual rate spring rate, um, it's also much longer travel. So it's uh, freer flowing, you know, just everything about it works better. And then of course, when you put these in, you can back it up with an air bump stop or a nitrogen charged bump stop. Uh, th these are hydraulic also, just like your shock, instead of the foam one or the rubber one that came on those. So it helps to slow down the impact when you get near bottom out and then doesn't let it rebound fast so you don't get any spring back. Um, typically when you install these, you also upgrade uh, the links that hold the suspension, the axles. This is really um, top of the line and, and ultimately where you probably want to be. And uh, when you meet somebody who's really into Jeeps, this is probably what they're going to be running. Okay. Next step. Okay. So when we talked about leaf springs, we showed you the spring under. Now this is spring over. So this will give you an instant five inch lift just by putting the spring up on top because the tube is about three inches in diameter plus the height of the spring pack gives you about five inches of lift. Um, this can be a very inexpensive way to do it. You simply add on another perch that's welded onto the axle and uh, move the spring over, but it sometimes five inches is way more lift than you need. So then what happens is, is people start to take leaves out of the pack, which makes the springs flatter, not have as much arc. The problem with that is, is that they're very prone to wrap. So meaning you've got so much torque and leverage that the spring will twist a lot and uh, that typically damages the shocks, the drive line, the steering. Um, nothing's really made to move that much. Um, so it's an inexpensive way to go, but I wanna caution you against that because it has its drawbacks, okay? All right. And you're, you're gonna hear that term SOA, spring over, so that's, that's what that's referring to. Okay, so let's talk about this now. Shocks, so shocks are an important part of the suspension. Um, typical, I don't know if you realize it, but your shock underneath is a, uh, a factory style shock like this, 
whether you have a standard model or a Rubicon, it's going to look something like this. It might be a different color. Um, standard shocks are just that. They're um, high volume, high production, low cost, and uh, they're not great. What, what you want to do is get yourself an aftermarket shock. This one happens to be a Rancho, but you can get a Bilstein. Uh, there's several brands out there. Um, they come with a little bit better ends, sometimes urethane, and uh, that has less sponge in it, so they start to react faster. Sometimes they're adjustable. So this shock shown in the picture right here, I think is a King or a Fox. And um, you can see that it's mounted just behind the coil spring. And um, this is very common. And uh, if you have a lift kit in your Jeep, this is how it's done. So they put in a longer coil spring. They give you a spacer so that um, you move your bump stop closer and uh, you don't actually get any more wheel travel. What you just get is a taller Jeep. So um, it's kind of misleading. Um, I actually call shame on these guys for even doing this because it's not the right way to do it. The whole idea behind you putting uh, longer shocks, longer springs is to actually get more travel. And uh, to me, this is kind of the smoke and mirrors, bait and switch, I don't like it. Um, so then we go to coil over, right? This is the upgrade that I told you anybody who's a true enthusiast is going to be on a coil over and uh, you can see that we've moved the spring and dampening control much further closer to the knuckle on the axle so this is about a six inch difference and um, that also means that you have uh, a lot more control and stability beside the fact that this is a much higher quality shock um, and again dual rate springs versus single rate so um, this is going to give you the top spring is your ride spring, the bottom spring is your load spring, and uh, that's, that's really going to work nice. Um, then we've got what everybody commonly sees, which is what we happen to be running on one of our King of the Hammers race cars, is a coilover and a bypass. Okay, so um, a lot of people like this look. They, they want the look. It's expensive and it's loud. The, the, the bypass valves click like a loose control arm bolt and um, it, it's a little bit deceiving beside the fact that it's hard to take this package and put it over here and still have everything you need in a Jeep to work, right? This is really uh, made for a race car where there's no body, there's no other stuff that you have to work around. It's, it's purpose built and uh, the only reason you need a shock like this is if you go to different uh, track conditions or race conditions or are running different size tires or the vehicle's changing, it gives you external adjustability, okay? This same feature, what's called a bypass shock, which means it's stroke sensitive. So as the piston travels within the shock, it's changing the amount of dampening and it's getting much more progressive to slow the vehicle down. These shocks are available in what's called an IBP or internal bypass shock. So you can have the coilover and the bypass all built in one. It's the exact same shock that I raced at King of the Hammers in my Jeep, the Terramoto, which is a JK. And uh, these are all off the shelf parts. So there's nothing. These are custom order, special order. This is off the shelf stuff. And I've already tuned them. So when you put them on, it's ready to go wheeling in a Jeep. You buy this kind of stuff, you don't know if it's made for a buggy, a truck, you know, who knows, um, where that's a completely different animal once you get into this. So um, again, better than stock, a huge upgrade, like night and day, and then, you know, race style stuff. So, um, you, you know, depending on what your budget is, um, you can kind of choose, but I just want to do also have you understand what the different styles are. Okay. All right. That's the end of this episode. Stay tuned for more stages of the terminology video series. Um, we're covering all kinds of subject and uh, it'll tell you everything you need to know to become an expert in terminology about your Jeep.